succulent growers. Welcome to my end of year 2021 Cactus and Succulent Polytunnel update. And uh, first of all, I'm going to start off with this section here. And uh, I haven't done a update in the polytunnel for months and uh, because it's the end of the year coming up to the end of the year now i thought perfect opportunity to show you an update on what is happening with the cactus and succulents now those of you who follow my channel know i've got many more cactus and succulents inside the house but i'll make a separate video on them in the coming days this is just the polytunnel collection so first of all, I'm going to start off here and it's obviously going to take me way too long to go through every single individual plant that I have here in the polytunnel. So I'm just going to scan around and uh, talk very briefly about each one and show you what's, what we've got in flower and what's coming up in bud and the different types of cacti I've got here. And uh, they're all pretty much overwintering now because, as I say, it's the end of December. Not much happening other than with the Slumbergeras, the holiday cacti. And here we go, this table here. This is um, my Aeniums, a selection of different types, looking very lovely as well. One thing I love about Aeniums is they always look like they're in flower. This is actually the foliage, how they look, but gorgeous. Different types and different varieties all there here. And then I've got my very old Echinopsis oxygona, very multi-headed specimen here that I've had for many, many years. So this is, you so show you the size of my hand compared to this beautiful specimen. He's overwintering really nicely. And then here on this table, I've got a, a selection of different types of um, Trichocereus cacti. I've got Trichocereus um, pacanoi, Trichocereus um, Bridge SE, as you can see there, and different types of uh, Tocheski, different types of Trichoceres, the smaller ones on this table here, all overwintering nicely. And then here I have uh, three, um, well, yeah, three in, in the one part, very large Trichoceres scopolicolas that are just over five feet high, a bit taller than me, the, the tallest one got two smaller ones in here all in the same pot I've got an epiphyllum there as well and here I've got um, a Trichocereus peruvianus a lovely blue variety here beautiful specimen and then here I have my old uh, big old Apuntia orbiculata um, articulata I should say lovely lovely specimen there and at the back here I've got some Apuntias and also a um, Clisocactus hildewintera at the back. And then here on this table, I have a selection of mostly all Lophophoras, all different varieties there, all overwintering at the moment. So obviously there's not gonna be any signs of buds on these, probably until at the earliest late March, April time. All different varieties on there. And then here I have my um, tested an area, elephant typees, and that's still in lovely vine. This forms a vine in the fall time and into the winter, so that's looking pretty good. Because it's still in vine, I do still water this, this succulent a bit lightly once a month during the winter, only when it's in vine, as you can see here. And then here on this table, I have a selection of um, some matucanas, different varieties there. And as I say, it would take me way too long to say the individual plants. But if you see any particular cactus or succulent that you want to know the exact name of, let me know what, what part it appears in the video and then I can let you know what, what it is. And here, more different Lophophoras here. Lophophora caspicitosa, the multi-headed varieties. Some very um, old Lophs of mine as well, all different ones. And um, this here, it looks quite, um, quite cool, but it's actually outgrowing previous spider mite damage, as you can see, and as the, the new growth appears, this is how it looks, so very, very cool looking. And more Lophophoras all on here. And then here on these, these little, this little plant, this little plant stand, I've got here a mixture of more, some more Lophophoras also, and a selection of some little small Astrophytums on here different varieties and then here I have um, this is Pino, two Pinoceros gregis that I've grown from seed here and there's some Frithias there this one here is Austrocylindra puntia clavoids um, the very unusual little cactus and then into here I've got my, some of my epiphytes and uh, Slumbergeras here and uh, Ripsalidopsis Slumbergeras here are in bud very exciting to see um, this one here is Ripsalidopsis hat hatiora rosea 
So lovely to see these are all cuttings that I took from a mother plant that I had to save a few years ago and they're doing really well. And another Ripsolidopsis there as well. More Slumbergera in bud also. And down here, another the Slumbergera in bud. This is the Slumbergera Thor variety, the pink flowering one. And a little seed pod there as well. And uh, this is my... Um, this is actually my um, slumbergera that I've grown from seeds. So very exciting to see um, doing so well. Same with this one as well, little cuties. And uh, here, another slumbergera thaw as well, just coming to the end of its flowering. This one here was my pinky white flowering one. Again, all the flowers are finished on that now for the year. And then here I have got a mixture of seedlings, sort of older seedlings now, uh, mostly sort of trichocereus varieties as you can see there and uh, different types of them. Um, this is trichocereus um, fields pachanoi and this one is Helen Baker, all different little varieties of trichocereus seedlings. And here on this table I've got some, a mixture of Areocarpus varieties and some astrophytum, different varieties of astrophytums as well on here. This lovely astrophytum nudens, very old plant. And here, Mammillaria gracilis. And here, this, these are um, telocactus, um, different varieties of telocactus on there. Absolutely gorgeous. And then this one here is my big Luctumbergia. Uh, Principis, very large old old plant that I, I got from my late friend Bill a few years ago so it's a very wonderful specimen as you can see there's the size of my hand and that's the size of it absolutely gorgeous and I have a much smaller one here that I've had for many years so they are very slow growing so there's great age to this one and here is some uh, Fellow cact telocactus and ferrocactus is a beautiful, amazingly wacky long spine one, absolutely gorgeous specimen here. This is my very old multi headed um, ferrocactus as well. This, this one is must be well over 25 years old and it's one I did have to cut at the top because it rotted many many years ago, over 20 years ago and then as a result it formed these three huge pups at the top so it's an awesome specimen. Here lovely ferrocactus gracilis, absolutely gorgeous specimen here and uh, this is one about, this is a Raybusia. Um, this one, absolutely beautiful variety here. Mammillaria here also, common era, beautiful. And this one here is also a um, Mammillaria as well, gorgeous. And as I say, if you want to know the actual names of them, do let me know what time, what part of the video they're appearing on, let you know, because it's gonna take me too long to put all the names going across the screen with all the individual ones. And uh, this one here is Eriocyce near Porteria and the same with this one as well and this one is absolutely beautiful this is one that Dazanidi from Cacti Mania gave us a couple of years ago doing very well near Porteria Clavata beautiful specimen and a little Turbinocarpus Swobidae here and this is a little Mammillaria gracilis it's a little the miniature variety of um, this is a similar variety as well over there but this one is the uh, the miniature variety absolutely gorgeous now down here I have some succulents here on the floor. These are a selection of calanchoes and uh, some very large aloes, the traditional aloe vera here, and uh, aloe arborescens, very large aloes. And I've got some more aloes over here, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, but a uh, huge big specimens there. And then on this table I have a selection of many different types of succulents, mainly echeverias, graptevias, graptevias I should say, graptosedums, and the like and some crassulas as well so i'm just going to show you scan the, the camera on slowly so you can see what i've got and as i say any plants you want to know the actual names of do let me know and i will let you know in the the link just let me know what part in the video it appears so a mixture of many different types all pretty much overwintering at the moment there is signs of flower buds as you can see starting to come up even though it's only december but uh, the weather has been sort of very mild here for December in Ireland and uh, the UK in general. And here's a selection of crassulas, more sort of echeverias and graptevias, graptosedums as well and graptobatalums, all pretty much overwintering well. Another sort of calanchoe here, that's the calanchoe wendy. 
here more a selection of different succulents and uh, here I have my uh, my crassula this is crassula marnimiana still in beautiful little buds so, so little bloom gorgeous little blooms here it's been blooming for quite a few weeks and uh, here this is avonia amazing amazing little plant here and more sort of echeverias as well all different varieties all pretty much overwintering well and as I say there'll be a lot more happening in this polytunnel in the next couple of months March time everything starts to wake up and things come into bud but I wanted to make an update at the end of year because I haven't done one for so long and you can see see what what's an update on the collection as well this is a lovely crassula jade plant crassula ovata variegated absolutely beautiful specimen with its lovely sort of marble like leaves more calanchoes here so a selection of different calanchoes and crassulas all on here and uh, I'm going to show you because I've got quite a few hanging baskets as well but I'll do that towards the end so you can see what I've got in here and then here this is a this stand here I've got a selection of aloes, um, hawortias, um, gasterias and um, the like I should say here all different types all different varieties and uh, some senecios as well Fucaria, just straighten that up Pilosipilios also many different uh, varieties this one has fell over but when it's the trouble is with these type of greenhouses because they're plastic if it's very windy this gets knocks plants down sometimes so hopefully you can get to see what I've got there and then here agaves, aloes, gasterias, hawortheas all different varieties all underneath here and uh, here and then this one is quite a wacky a wacky plant here and uh, this one is um, Marlo this Marlo Thistella it's a funny name yeah Marlo Thistella Stenophylla quite a wacky and an unusual succulent there and this one here is Scylla via via folia very lovely foliage and uh, more selection of different types this one is a beautiful one as well this is Delo Sperma very gorgeous and then more aloes underneath these ones right at the back are ones that I've grown from seed and it's aloe arborescens and aloe um, el elgonita, elgonica so um, they're all uh, seed grown different uh, types here more different aloes as well all here all doing well and then in this big big basket here I've got a mixture of more echeverias and graptopetalums here all hanging out this basket I was going to give it a really good pruning back in the spring but I actually sort of like it when they grow hanging like that and lanky I'm a bit weird though but I, I love the way they they look when they hang down and I've got a big big amethyst crystal on there because I love my crystals too and uh, that's supporting this big basket very nice and then here I've got a mixture of more more different types of succulents as well aloes and crassulas and sedums all different varieties there this is an aloe as well I can see that it's quite shriveled at this time of year so people are always asking me about watering especially succulents in the winter time well I always say if they're, if they're shriveling and uh, the weather's not too damp and cold you can go ahead and get a bit of a water I do water some of my aloes in there in the winter time this one is because he's in dire need of a bit of water so I'm going to be giving this a bit of water after I finish filming but um, other than that I keep the majority of them dry but usually sort of February time when things are starting to shrivel and the, the days get longer I will start to slowly introduce a bit of water to the shriveled varieties so on sedums here more gasterias and hawortheas and aloes a selection of a selection of many different types there and uh crassulas and i don't know if i can reach down there sorry guys but there's more aloes and uh different types of varieties of uh, aloe mostly aloes all down the bottom there hope you can get to see and uh, here big um, crassula ovata jade plant here and that one is crass crassula the commonly known as the propeller plant 
and then here just step back I have an amazing very very old possibly 70 years old uh, Slumbergera truncata commonly known as the Thanksgiving cactus I've had for many years and this is absolutely bloomy beautiful at the moment as you can see gorgeous gorgeous flowers and this has been blooming for quite a few weeks I normally make a sort of separate video on it when, it when it's completely all in bloom so I haven't yet because there's still lots of buds to open but uh, I will probably make an update on this separately in the coming days so do stay tuned but it's a beautiful 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 uh, cactus I have to say this one here is another Slumbergera um, Tendenza Orange Brazil this hasn't been blooming this year which is a shame this is normal for it to have these deep red leaves because that's the type of this variety I repotted it last, uh, this year and I think the energy has gone towards the root system rather than flowers because it's been producing a lot of new leaves so rather than the flowers that's my big epiphyllum pegasus that is overwintering very nicely at the moment and some more crassula jades there crassula avatas and uh, that's the crassula golem and another crassula avata and I just want to say normally this time of year I'd have my my Crassula avatas in flower but because they're overwintering here in this polytunnel which as you can see it's green coated it's not the best for light especially in Ireland I'm in Northern Ireland when I had the clear greenhouse this used to bloom in the winter time so it really needs bright light to flower but at the moment it's, as long as it can overwinter okay that's my priority but uh, obviously in the future hopefully when the uh, when we can move house and get somewhere with a garden we can have a proper greenhouse we'll have, see a bit more flowers on them especially during the winter time now here you have a mixture of many 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 different types arvo punctures commonly known as the prickly pears and i'm not going to get too close to this table because if i do i'm going to be covered in glow kids so they, i just want to say there's a mixture of many many different types hopefully you can get to see from this video here and as i say i dare get too close because i will not get the glow kids out um, these are what um, i've grown from seed these are a bunch of humifusers all seed grown they're extremely cold hardy a puncher so these would survive even in a very cold climate if you can have them planted out in a well draining soil away from extra rain that one's very shrivelly and as you can see normal for them to do do this this time of year in fact it's normal for cacti to shrivel in the winter because that's actually a good sign they're able to withstand colder temperatures as soon as you start to water them again in the spring they fatten up again so don't need to worry if your cactus is shriveling if you have it indoors in a warm temperature and it's shriveling then you can give a little bit of water in the winter as long as you're careful and it's always best to if it's shriveling too much as well bit of a tip take it out the pot and just check there's no pests on the roots or anything that can stop that and uh, as you can see there there isn't a puncture that has fallen over at the back right at the very back i'm not i can't go over and reach it to lift it up because i don't want to get uh, covered in glow kids but it's okay where it is i can sort all this out again in the spring but they're all overwintering pretty well and yes i know this isn't an apuncture that's a mother of thousands plant they appear everywhere and uh, i'm just going to leave it there where it is because it's not doing any harm it's amazing how they just seem to spring up in pots absolutely everywhere this one here is um also cylinder puncture salmiana and these are all the little um the red the, the fruits and what's amazing about this particular cactus is that you can actually propagate the fruits I'm going to be taking some of these off I'm giving these to to people I said I'm going to be sending plants to which I'm definitely going to be doing early next year and well this year I should say coming up and uh, these propagate so easily just from the fruits it's a bit of a quite an unusual way of propagating but that's that's how they propagate and then here is more um, of the Apuncha family here, Austria Cylinder Apuncha, um, all different types here as well. Tephro Cactus, all linked to the Apuncha family, all different varieties. Again, I am not going to get too close because I don't want to get um, pricked absolutely in every place imaginable. But uh, they're all over in, in, overwintering pretty well, as you can see. Um, again very uh, spiny and uh, prickly and then here I've got a mixture of different types of echinopsis cactus and these these have the most amazing flowers come spring but as I say at the moment they're still all overwintering 
pretty much so not much happening obviously we've had nothing happening at the moment with them they're all just resting but just to show you here these are flower buds from last spring so I don't think last summer I should say I don't think these are going to materialize at this time of year now and here all different types of uh, echinopsis more here and uh, these are the golden barrels, echinocactus, different varieties here of echinocactus, all different types. This one is the, the one that, the echinocactus that doesn't have any spines on it at all. Now these are my very old astrophytums there as well. And then just step back here to show you, here I have uh, more tall cacti that are big, a lot taller than I am and a Kleister cactus in here, a Pachycerus pringley and here is a Marginatus, Pachycerus marginatus as well and more um, Trichocerius varieties again this one is like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and I've supported it with a, with a bit of a rope here so it doesn't topple over more Trichocerius here as well and that's where it was attacked by a slug a few years ago and I cut the top off and it formed this little pup which is lovely to see more more there growing some epiphyllums all over winter in here and then I'll just stand back to show you what I've got here as well um, this is a ripsalis overwintering really nice ripsalis here now this one is the string of pearls here and uh, again looking a little bit shriveled so may have to give that a bit of water as well and this is string of tears all uh, on the little hanging plants down, hanging little planters here from the roof and then this one is my um, zigzag epiphyllum as well overwintering nicely from the roof and uh, yep there's some more here Slumbergera um, the true Christmas cactus this is Slumbergera buckley and uh, this one is starting to come into bud as well very exciting to see lots of buds on there and then some more Slumbergeras as well, these are the trunk art variety, some Ripsalidopsis in there as well, mixture of uh, a few different things. Um, Ripsalidopsis by the way is the Easter cactus in case you want to know. And then here I have a lovely hanging basket of um, more Slumbergera commonly known as Thanksgiving cactus, all in buds, so all in bloom at the moment, all blooming beautiful, all different varieties as you can see, very very pretty and uh, step back again oh there's so many plants I'm out of breath so just trying to make this video so it's not too long for you guys but it's uh, hard to um, make it shorter because there is so many plants I have to have to talk about here some more Echinopsis is here as well and uh, some Echino Echino uh, serious variety some smaller ones here more Kleister cactus and this one is Euphorbia herida this is the only Euphorbia they'll actually keep in the polytunnel because it's, an, it's this one in my experience is a very cold hardy one as long as it's kept dry all my other Euphorbias are all in the house overwintering and as I say stay tuned in the next probably the next couple of weeks I'll do an update of everything that's in the house because there's a lot more cacti and succulents in the house and this one here is Prodia magnifica absolutely gorgeous specimen and uh, just show you the size of it to my hand again a very old 25 year probably older than that plant very beautiful in fact I think it's 27 years because I got it when I was in my very early 20s so this is a very old old plant here another Proja Magnifica and this one is my partner Hans's lovely uh, specimen he's also had for many years and very beautiful varieties my other Prodia as well here and although it's a magnifica I'm trying to think it's crossed with something else this old specimen I can't think off the top of my head that's also another lovely one as well and then here is my um, I nicknamed this one Einstein this one is, is a very wacky um, very wacky cactus as well here very very beautiful and then uh, some more mixture of different types here of uh, te sort of tello cactus bicolor and uh, steno cactus as well nicknamed the brain cactus because of how it looks lots of different ones a little bowl here of a selection of all different types of cactus and uh, aloe in here and echinocerius as well here more echinocerius and uh, more echinocerius at the back there selection of many different types 
I by the way, I just want to mention that this one is Cephalocerius sinilis and uh, that's the one I name I decided trying to tell you the name of that one in case you want to know. Here are monkey's tails, these are ones that I've grown from seed, very cute indeed. And I'll show you the mother monkey's tail, I'm going to show you that one in a bit. Here is another big Trichocerius, this is my Trichocerius grandiflorus, like a big snake growing along, absolutely amazing cactus. Here again, more Trichocerius, this is Trichocerius scopolicola as well here, more here. This one is um, Trichocerius um, peruvianus, very, very um, beautiful, awesome specimen, as tall as me this one, and this one a little bit shorter, gorgeous, gorgeous cactus. Again, I've had this for about 27 years also. And here I've got some epiphyllums that are hanging up here, different selection. Here it's Ripsalis as well here. Some more Ripsalis, other Ripsalis going across. And then take down here, I've got some more epiphyllums under the table there where they're just overwintering. These are ones that go out into the yard in the, in the springtime, so they're just overwintering at the moment some more trichocerius varieties. This is a, a yucca plant that we normally have out in our yard over, over winter and it's here in the polytunnel for the winter. And this is my lovely golden barrel, Echino, Echino cactus crusoni. And it's a very beautiful, again, very old um, golden barrel that I've had for many years. You show you the size of it, it's large there. And here is my very, very tall trichocerius uh, Pacanoi crossed with Scopolicola, that is about six, well over six feet high I would say, almost touching the roof, very large plant there. And uh, next to it here I have my Mammillaria red-headed Irishman. If you want to know what this white powder is, it's not mealybugs, it's actually um, Diamaceus, Diamaceus earth that I've put on as a prevention for pests because it had mealybug in the summer. So I covered it all with uh, Diamaceus earth and it's done the job. So uh, that's why it's powdery white. And here at the bottom is some Trichocerius young seedlings here, but about five years old that I've grown from seed. And then here's another Trichocerius scopolicola multi-headed variety there. And then here on this table, I have a selection of mostly Camacerius, common known as the peanut cactus, all different varieties. Look, nothing special at this time of year, but when they're in the springtime, they have the most gorgeous color blooms, different uh, varieties of yellow, orange, and red, very lovely. And another Echinocerius at the back there. And I'll just show you this side here, so Parodias, different types of Parodias there and um, another Echinocerius pentalopus, different varieties there, and a mixture of some more Camacerius as well, all um, at the back. And there's a bowl here with agaves in and Mammillaria as well, different varieties in there. Another red-headed Irishman, this one is my partner Hansi's, full of seed pods, so we need to be harvesting them pretty soon. And here I have more sort of a mixture of Camacerius again and Raybouchers. These are all the Raybouchers. Again, Raybouchers are wonderful little bloomers and uh, they will be coming up into bloom in the springtime. Lovely to see. More Raybouchers here of different varieties as well. All there. And then Mammillarias at the back here. Wonderful, wonderful varieties. More Mammillarias on this table. As I say, I can't mention the individual types of mammillarias and what they are because it would be too long of a video. Plus, I can't think off the top of my head, but as I mentioned before in the video, just let me know what part the, it appears in the video if you want to know the actual name and I can let you know in the comments. So a mixture of many different types here. Again, a lot of them have got seed pods, which is great because come the new year, in a few days, I shall be then harvesting a lot of the seed pods and uh, just going to walk around here. It's like an obstacle course in this greenhouse, guys. <laughs> uh, so here we are. Again, some more young mammillarias and uh, different varieties here. Some young ferro cactus. Again, on here. No, here we are to the gymnocalisiums. Different varieties all here as well. This one is actually not a gymno, it's a prodia, but that's a gymno here. All the different types of gymnos all over wintering pretty good and I've also got a mixture of some ferro cactus as well at the back here different different varieties and uh, 
pretty good everything over wintering well and then here on this table um, ferro cactus some tello cactus as well on here and I say tello cactus can sometimes cross over with with ferro cactus at the same time these are tello cactus here and a selection of different types of ferro cacti all here love the awesome spines on ferro cactus they are just incredible I see a lot of these I've had for quite a long time and uh, here is a uh, Pachycerus pringley as well very old variety and I'll just go and show you I know I've missed out my very old tall large Pachycerus pringley which is this one here and this one is taller than me now it's about five and a about five about five and a half feet tall it is a very beautiful variety when I got this over 20 about 22 years ago it was about that height and look at it now it is huge so very very wonderful and I know this is a very long video guys so I hope you made yourself a strong cup of coffee to uh, keep watching now here we are this is the Cleistocactus um, that I've grown from seed this is Cleistocactus jugensis and these are all what I've grown from seed about six years ago now very cute and some of these are the the um, Echinopsis subdenudatus little seedlings that have also grown from seed about three years ago now so still quite small a mixture of all different type of seedlings some that I've grown from this year some I've grown from three or four years ago um, Labivias, Mamillarias and uh, some Matucana there they're actually pups that I've been propagating and these are ones that fall off whenever I have pups fall off I put them underneath and um, then I give them to people so that's uh, busy 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 and then here a mixture of more different types of seedlings here Cory panther borwiggies all that grown from seed about five years ago here and this is another Rebusha, this is Rebusha perplexa beautiful beautiful pink flowers in the spring and I don't know whether you can hear that guys it's raining very soothing on the polytunnel this is my Cedar Morganium as well, little hanging basket and uh, I think I've missed anything out yep some more sedums here as well it's in by Cleister Cactus in here and uh, underneath another aloe as well Crassulum viscosa there some more aloes I've got on the floor here larger plants and then here yep nearly done guys thank you for watching this far if you've been watching this far so now I'm going to show you the hanging baskets I've got here this is my um, ripsalis packed 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 with lots of little seed fruit pods as you can see here very beautiful red coloured little pods I'm going to be harvesting them in January in the next couple of days so do stay tuned for videos when I'm harvesting these and another slumbergera as well beautiful blooms on this has been blooming for weeks this one has just finished and this is a new one more buds on the way as well and more buds on here and this is my lovely monkey's tail I always get so many comments when I share this in the video this is Cleistocactus colodimonsis and again beautiful cactus because it produces hair that actually does feel like animal hair it's just incredible beautiful beautiful cactus that's overwintering well look at that beautiful hairy specimen it's a stunner and probably one of my favorite cacti in my collection I love it and as I mentioned earlier the two little seedlings which I'm just going to show you here are actually two little babies that I've grown from seed and uh, this one is actually one that I've grown from seed not from that plant it was a seed I was given and this is actually a baby from the actual one I've just shown you there that I have grown uh, from seed from that plant very lovely Oh yes, I've missed a plant out. How could I forget this one? This is Espostoa, and uh, this one again is a very old plant here. And uh, it went dead at the top. It just sort of dried up and then formed a pup at the side. And this pup grew from the top there. Absolutely wonderful. And there's another pup growing around there, if you can see as well. So wonderful to share. I'm just trying to think if I missed. There's so many plants that I forget to mention them all afterwards, but. I'll just try and do as many as I can physically think of at the moment and uh, here so that's that beautiful plant there now these are epiphyllums that are sort of pretty much overwintering 
here as well and this one is a poro um, a porophyllum as well different types in here again seed pods on there lovely to see and a succulent growing in there too and this one is also um, a porophyllum also different types and then here I have my Slumbergera Thorland Thor variety and it's been blooming lovely it's gone a bit limp now again I think it needs a bit of water because it's been taking up a lot of water it's been flowering not looking as good as it did a few days ago because a lot of the blooms are on their way out now but it has been very beautiful I just want to mention it's quite normal when it, when these plants these Christmas and Thanksgiving cacti have been blooming I've always found that they do tend to go limp after and that's because a lot of the energy has been going to producing flowers so don't panic if yours goes a bit limp after flowering it's quite normal it will pick up again in the spring when it gets its energy stores up so you don't want to be over watering or anything like that just keep the soil lightly lightly damp and let it completely dry in between waterings because it has these these holiday cacti also have a rest after they've finished flowering so do bear that in mind and I've actually made a video on why your, your Christmas and Thanksgiving cactus goes limp after flowering. So if you haven't seen that video, do watch it. I'll link it up above and down below in the video description because I've been asked quite a lot about why their, their Slumbergera's holiday cactus are going a bit limp after flowering, but it is normal um, as long as obviously there's no root pests and things like that. But I explain all that in that video, so do go ahead and watch it if you haven't already. And here's is another cross area beautiful this is a different variety to this one here this has larger blooms and this one has much smaller blooms but very beautiful in a little hanging basket there and then here this is my string of dolphins as well in this other hanging basket and I think I have to say I think that's pretty much it I'm just trying to think if I've missed anything out but uh, that's the update so far for the end of year and I just want to Thank you all for your support throughout the year guys, you've been amazing on my channel, your lovely comments and all the support that you give me, thanks you so much. And uh, next year let's hope we have a really good plant powered new year ahead and I want to give this opportunity to wish you all a very happy plant powered 2022. So thank you so much for watching guys and uh, if you haven't done already please do subscribe don't forget to click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos and don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon and for more growing tips as well do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of crazy plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.